My guest had a one-hour visitation with Jesus. No, he didn't. Hey everybody, Sean here and welcome to Revealing Truth. Yes, in Sid's latest video, Freddy Ramirez says he spoke with Jesus face to face for one hour. Well, being on the Sid Roth show is the first warning siren. And yes, he's merchandising the word of God like they all do and teaches how you can learn the keys to walk into the encounter realm of heaven. He even claims that groups of people saw the exact same thing when they did this. This is going beyond what is written, and we're told not to do that in 1 Corinthians 4, 6. And the reason? So that we won't take pride in one man over another. Because that's all these liars are doing. They make up these crazy supernatural stories and the weak in faith are drawn into these super Christians and want to experience these things as well. But once again, if the Bible doesn't teach this, then it's man-made and going beyond what is written. Now, by the looks of it, this guy's new in the game and only has a small following. And he's another self-appointed prophet, it would seem. And if we look at the titles of his videos, it's all the same nonsense we see in the New Apostolic Reformation. Things like Jesus appearing in his living room, God physically visiting them, teaching how to activate angels, and what collection of lies would be complete without Jesus taking them on a tour of hell. And there's all sorts of other nonsense, like Jesus appearing to him and his buddy, and God's angel jumping into the car with them. Seriously, these people are either pathological liars or they're actually being visited by fallen angels. That seems to be the only two logical possibilities. And of course, he's got his own Holy Spirit school that focuses on healing from demons. Because while deliverance helps remove demonic oppressions, Jesus taught us that when a soul is left empty and in order, demonic spirits return with seven worser spirits, leaving the person worse off than before the deliverance. You gotta be kidding me. Yes, demons can come back to an unsaved person, which is why they need to be born again and indwelt by the Holy Spirit. If God in you isn't enough to keep demons from coming back into your body, then nothing is. But it seems that he does understand deliverance is a moneymaker and addresses the high demand for this. So, now that we know a bit more about Freddy, Let's hear what he has to say on the Sid Roth Show. He talks about having sleep paralysis at one point, and God said this. But one day in prayer, the Lord told me, Freddie, I want you to take authority over what's happening to you. I want you to command my angels to stand watch over you. And so I did exactly what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command angels to stand guard in my room, and I command all demonic spirits to never visit me ever again. So what happened? And in that moment, Sid, I'll tell you, I was so excited. At that time, I was scared of going to sleep, but now I was excited to go to sleep because I would literally see angels <laughs> standing in my room. And I've never suffered a sleep paralysis ever since that one time. I don't understand the fascination with us commanding angels. The Bible doesn't say we can do this. Yet so many in the NAR movement teach that we can. And seeing angels also seems to be quite common. He's excited to go to sleep now because he can see angels in his room. 2 Peter 2, 3 comes to mind. Greedy people making up stories to take your money. And here's another story. And so I remember one day, I got up early in the morning to pray and I go to this church building and I start walking towards the front and all of a sudden, I see this tall man in a white robe. I couldn't see his face. He walked, but he walked in a speed that just did not make sense. It was like he was walking, but he was running at the same time. He walks right through me. Through you? Literally right through me. <laughs> I was completely amazed. So I remember I turn around, and when I turn around, I just see like a sizzling smoke just appear. And I see him walk into the back and just disappear. But the beautiful thing, Sid, 
is that when I see him walk away and disappear, I could see countless of angels in the back room. So intercessors are praying in the front, but I see angels <laughs> praising God and dancing in the back. And after the prayer is over, I see this uh, a friend of mine that I recognize, and I explain to him exactly what just happened to me. He began to tell me, just like, oh my God, you saw Jesus. <laughs> that was Jesus, he was coming after you. And the OMG thing just seals the deal for me on these phonies. Now comes the most amazing one hour visitation with this same Jesus that gifted Freddie with the supernatural gift of prophecy, healing and deliverance and commissioned him to teach God's priority. You'll be surprised. It's not souls. Hmm. <laughs> be right back. Well, if God's priority isn't saving souls, then it's not God because salvation is the most important thing there is in this life. And Jesus comes out and he sits on the chair right next to me. And, in the, and so we began to have conversations uh, for about an hour. It was amazing. And then there came a point where Jesus got up and he said, I gotta go. And I'm like, will, will we do this again? And he told me, I'm gonna teach you how to encounter me. And he said, Freddie, you need to understand, it's not about you. I want to train you to encounter me so that you can teach my people how to encounter me because I want to have an intimate relationship with my people. Well, that actually leads you to this question. When Freddie said, our major priority is not souls, yes. I, I live for people to come to know the Messiah. What did, what did Jesus mean? Yes, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering the same thing. If it's not souls, what is it about? And listen, souls is the top priority for, for God. And it is a top priority for us. But the Holy Spirit one day told me this. He told me, Freddie, I don't need you to advance my kingdom. I can advance the kingdom on my own. I choose to use you. But my priority, our priority is to have relationship with our Father. Everything flows from that place in. If we don't have relationship with God, what power do we have to save? We don't even have the power to bring anyone to Christ if it's not through the Holy Spirit. See, sometimes we think that if we want them to be convicted, we have to see it. But the truth of the, that Jesus really began to teach me is if we just learn to plant the seed, if we just learn to preach the gospel, if we just learn to bring the good news of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will do his job of convicting them of their sin. And all we have to do is collect the harvest that is coming for us. Well, that was a confusing mix of truth and error. So souls isn't the most important thing, but actually it is, he says. But then it's actually relationship with the Father. But unless someone is saved, they can't have a relationship with God. And then some truth about seed planting, which is preaching the gospel, and then God does the rest in regards to conviction and drawing people to himself. But then he ends off with saying it's about us collecting the harvest that's coming for us. We have nothing to do with the harvest. In Matthew 9, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. The most important thing is the workers planting the seeds of God's truth. Even when Jesus explained the parable of the weeds, he said, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Anyhow, this is another example of truth mixed with error. But all false teachers have to have some nuggets of truth, or else nobody would listen to them. And despite the truth he does speak, when it's mixed in with all these stories of Jesus personally visiting him and giving him this commission, 
he simply falls into the group of other liars like Brian Simmons that claims the same thing. Please realize that Jesus is not physically visiting anybody today. In Acts 1.11, the disciples were told the next time Jesus is seen will be in the clouds, the same way he left. And Revelation 1.7 tells us that every eye will see him. So once again, these private visits are either outright lies or they're demonic encounters because these stories don't line up with scripture. Anyhow, we're going to leave it here for today, but feel free to leave your comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.